the pattern area tool. To get to that particular tool, we're going to go through the task again. We'll go to the MoDOT Design CAD Standards, and let's select the one that says Pattern. And the border that's around this sheet is a 1 to 100 scale, so we're going to select the group that says 100 scale, and then you're going to see a group of patterns that you can place out here. This time we're going to go through here and select maybe, let's say, Rock. And once you select that particular pattern, it's going to bring up the Pattern Area tool with your options here at the top, very similar to what the Hatch tool did and also the Cross Hatch tool that had. But you also have a bunch of different parameters depending on how that pattern is going to be placed. Whenever you're selecting it through the task, all this stuff is preset properly, so whenever you print it out through a PDF or just a MicroStation plot, it'll look correct for your rock or your earth pattern or whatever pattern that you're trying to place. And then you have your options down below here, depending on how you want that pattern to be associated to it or not. And those were all demonstrated in the Hatch Area tool. So to come out here, we'll just use the flood method again. And if we come out here and simply left click inside that area, maybe we want to flood this area right here. Click inside there, you'll see it highlight. That's the area that's going to try to flood. If you accept that and you like it, just left click again to accept it. And it'll place that flood inside that area. Same thing if you had an element, you could use the element option. And you can simply identify that element. Left click again to accept it. And it places that pattern. Or if you want to change your pattern to something else, let's say let's say swamp. Maybe this time we'll do it by points. Change your method to points. And on the points method, all you have to do is simply just come out here and left click to identify points to place in that pattern. So if I start from one side of the flared in section, I'll left click once. Come out here, put in that pattern. Now I'm just doing it dynamically. Now I'll go to the other end of that flared in section right here. Once you're done with it, you'll see it's still trying to rubber band from it. It's trying to go to another point. If you're done, to reset to complete, simply right click to reset it. It's going to place in that pattern. And it places in that pattern accordingly, depending on which one that you select through the task. So that's the pattern area tool and the options underneath there. You could change some of these other options down below here if need be, depending on how you want that associated. But that, like I said, that was demonstrated in the hat area tool. Just keep in mind whenever you're placing a pattern out here, make sure you select the proper scale. Because if you don't, <clears throat> it may look correct on the screen, but if you print out, it may look like a, a just a solid black blob whenever you print out. Another thing to remember is patterns do not work with annotation scale. So right now, even though this is set to 1 to 100, and this is set to, you're setting, and you're selecting it from your task from a 100 scale, if you change your annotation scale to something different, your pattern will not change. Because like I said, patterns do not work with annotation scale as of right now. That's the pattern area tool and how it works.